What's good everyone, it's MJO23Dan back with another video. Today's video, I'm gonna be going over two pairs of shoes, one from 2006 and another from 2020. I'm gonna be doing a comparison between the 2006 Black Cat 4 and the 2020 Black Cat 4. Go over some of the similarities, the differences, and all that good stuff coming up. So on this channel, I do a lot of comparisons, a lot of stuff that is OG, uh, first time retros, and then, you know, comparing it to the newer stuff or any of the newer releases that come out. Um, just a little bit of both. So uh, if you're new here, consider subscribing. All right, so I gotta give a big old shout out to my friend Air Butchie. I've known Butch for some time now, even back in the mid 2000s in the Soul Collector Forum days. Good dude, he's a great photographer. If you guys ever want to see any of his work, at Air Butchie on Instagram. So he was able to send me his 2006 Air Jordan 4 Black Cat. And I wanted to do this comparison because I, I was just curious about the similarities. Jordan Brand usually is making stuff that first time retro or was like a retro plus, something that we've never really seen, and re retroing them. Uh, you know lately so uh, I definitely am curious to see like what are the differences here what are the similarities and I think you guys will be pleasantly surprised so if you have the 2006 definitely still a great shoe but if you have the 2020 even better let's take a closer look all right guys so before we jump into the comparison let's go ahead and give a overview of the 2020 Air Jordan 4 Black Cat so Jordan brand introduces the black box, their logo up top, flight underneath. Then all around the box, we get that cement print type feel. Details on the box right here, it is the Air Jordan 4 Retro in black, black, and light graphite. Style number is CU1110 and color code is 010. This is my regular size 10 and it was $190. So early access went out to these guys right here. I gotta give a, another shout out to my friend Harry who usually looks out for any of his early access stuff. So it dropped on Nike Plus for him for about 190 bucks, asked me if I wanted it. I said sure. Probably one of the anticipated releases for years to come since 2006 in fact. It was the last time that this shoe had ever retroed and I really didn't know how it was going to be received in 2020 so without having to wait for the general release I went ahead and pulled the trigger now this one the release dates moved around a bit and it was because of all-star weekend you know all-star drops are coming through I think people are still trying to figure out how the FLX program works losing points and all that stuff. I understand the frustrations, but some of you guys are asking me questions like I work for the company and I don't, but I think right now we'll just have to be patient to see how that all works. I know it's very frustrating because a lot of the drops are happening for All-Star Week and this is pretty much our Super Bowl of sneakers, right? So pretty much anything from Nike and Jordan Brand releases all the hype stuff and everything and people want them. So I think with anything in sneakers, it's just really a time to be patient. I know it's very frustrating. And I know personally, even though I've been lucky with some of the things, there's patience that has to be had in this sneaker game. But nonetheless, it's good construction. Although I do feel it is a little bit more boxy than I would prefer. I actually slipped these on right when I got them because I wanted to feel if they were similar to what I was experiencing with the Air Jordan 4 Black Cement 
where there was a lot of pinching right here on the pinky toe area. And to my surprise, that was not the case. The uh, issue there was not replicated. Um, I, maybe over time I might, but you know, who knows. I do want to get a second pair, but hopefully on sale. I know a lot of this stuff is sitting. So again, it just has to deal with patience. But overall, a good looking sneaker. I'm not sure why in 2006 it was very popular. It was an all black shoe. I don't know if you guys remember alongside that release came the Pure Money 4s, which is a counterpart to this, which was all white with some bling here on the lace holders. But this specific release, good padding, good padding on the tongue. On the inside, they give you that ortholite insole. On the 2006, they do a polyurethane insole. So step in comfort in that was great. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you guys to the 2006, so let's get started with that. All right, so here's the 2006. I used to own this thing back in the day, but unfortunately I had sold it. Most of the time that I do that, I try to either make room or try to make another purchase with another sneaker that I want. So these are the boxes that it came with, the gray top boxes with the silver jump man in the middle. Details on the label here, although it's not my size because it's my friend's size, the Air Jordan 4 Retro in black, black, light graphite. Style number is 308497 and color code is 002. Retail price for these were $115 in 2006. Can you believe that? All right, so the cool thing about this is that when you open up the box, what is this? It comes with a poster. So this was brand new to the inclusions of sneakers back then, which I feel like they should do this even now because it just creates a nostalgia hype for everything. What happened to the retro cards? What happened to the posters that were included with the shoes? You know, bring that stuff back. I think a lot of the newer kids, the new generation and stuff, and even the older guys, they appreciate that stuff and they really want to know like, what the history is of Jordan brand. So this is actually a poster of Michael Jordan hitting the shot against Cleveland in 1989. Details on the bottom right here, the shot, Michael Jordan, May 7, 1989. So the reason why the shot was super important back then is because Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls were trying to go deep into the playoffs. And this is probably the deepest that they've been in the attempt to try and defeat their nemesis, the Detroit Pistons, but they weren't able to do so in 89 and 90. Of course, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls went on to win three straight championships in 91, 92, and 93 to clear the hump. But this was an important shot in Chicago Bulls history and Michael Jordan's history because this is pretty much the one that showed people that he was serious about winning championships and trying to get over the hump. So here they are, the 2006. Go ahead and pull these babies out. So these era sneakers were notorious for paint cracking. And you guys will notice that probably all throughout the midsole or if you guys have ever owned the mid 2000s Jordan 4s. Paint cracking was a big issue back then and a lot of the blame has to do with the type of midsole that they were using and the type of paints that they were using. So they started doing closed cell polyurethane foams and something about the paint was not adhering to the midsoles here. So even if you get restores, sometimes they have issues with repainting these types of midsoles. So they actually have to restore these shoes using newer midsoles. But I think a lot of people are still experiencing some sort of cracking, you know, even up until now. But these were probably like one of the worst years to date. But, you know, other than that, this era was, you know, pretty popular with Air Jordan 4s. You got the Eminem 4s, the Undefeated 4s, the Lightning and Thunder Pack. You know, it was a very unique time for the Air Jordan 4. I would say it's probably one of the most collab sneakers that they've done. So you do notice a difference here with the wings. So the netting and the wing was different. This was something really different back in the day because it was the first, one of the first inclusions of a leather type wing there, whereas usually it's plastic. And then the netting went straight up and down, whereas unlike the 2020, it's more of what it used to be, the OG style 
where the netting went alongside with the wing. So you won't see that on these types of shoes here. So I'm glad they fixed that. That was something that I know annoyed me when I was owning fours during this time. You know, the upper, if you guys have seen a lot of used Air Jordan fours, there's a lot of cracking. You can see a little bit of the Durbuck cracking here on the tongue. And that's just something with the Air Jordan 4, you know, it was originally a shoe that had synthetic leather called Durabuck. Um, you know, I do love a leather type shoe instead of suede and nubuck, although it feels awesome. Anytime I wear these types of shoes, I'm always wary of wearing it in the rain or under harsh conditions. I know there's like waterproofers and stuff like that out there, but you know, again, leather is just my preference when it comes to shoes. So the difference is here, I have the right shoe of the 2006 and then the left shoe of the 2020. So the interior on the 2020 is gray while the 2006 is black. There's a lot more padding on the 2020, especially in the tongue area versus the 2006. On the back tab of the 2006, we got the black cat embroidery right behind the tongue. On the 2020, that's not present. Although in 2017, they did retro the blings or the pure money fours, and it did have pure money on the back of those. So I'm not sure why they didn't put it on the 2020 retro, but they did on the 2017 retro. And then, you know, just some slight color differentiations and then the way the jump man is, is placed there on the tongue or stitched there on the tongue. Just some minor variations, you guys can see that in the comparison. This is the 2006, this is the 2020. Jumping here on the back, you can see the Jumpmans. The 2020 right here is stitched all the way around. Whereas on the 2006, you can see the bottom arm, you can see a bit of the plastic. So that's just a little bit of the detail that Jordan Brand tries to change here. Then you can also see where this tab goes all the way down towards the midsole, whereas on the 2020, you do have a little bit of a space there. On the netting, you can see the difference of the netting here. You can see like throughout each square, there's like a bubble on each line, whereas on the 2006, it's just straight on through. Also the netting, it pulls away from the tongue or the material, whereas on the 2006, it's embedded within the material so it doesn't move like the 2020 does. Not sure if you guys can see the insoles in here. It's about the same, but the difference here is that the 2006 uses a polyurethane type insole, whereas on the 2020, they use an ortholite type insole. Then as far as the bottoms are concerned, you guys can see that the stars are flatter on the 2006, and then on the 2020, it's a bit raised. But all in all, it's about the same on the uh, outsoles of the shoes, the 2006 versus the 2020. So overall, guys, I think you guys are just getting a little bit of a variation between the two years. If you guys are going for the 2020, I feel it's just as good, if not better, than the 2006. So 2006 is still going for a good amount of money. The 2020 is staying pretty much at retail. Uh, hopefully these guys go for a bit cheaper, maybe even to the outlets, because I feel like an all-black sneaker and all-black Air Jordan is a cool addition to your rotation and collection. All right, guys, so that is my review of the 2006 versus the 2020 Black Hat 4. If you guys enjoyed that, hit the thumbs up. Let me know how you guys feel in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I show you guys a lot more, you know, substance, story time, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, let me know what you guys think overall. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks.